Welcome to Thursday's Devotions and today we're in question 95 in the Catechism as we continue to think about baptism. And question 95 says, to whom is baptism to be administered? So who should be baptised? And we're getting into a bit of a controversial subject here today. Well, let's see what the Catechism says. Baptism is not to be administered to any that are out of the visible church, till they profess their faith in Christ and obedience to him. But the infants as such as are members of the visible church are to be baptised. Okay, now who is not to be baptised? Let's think about it. Some people think everyone should be baptised. I remember one time a man threatened to take me to court because I said that for his child to be baptised, he needed to be a Christian. At least one parent needed to be a Christian. He spoke to his solicitor and he says, it's a human right to be baptised. Well, you disagree with the catechism, I think you disagree with God. It's not a human right to be baptised. The only ones to be baptised, the catechism says, are part of the visible church, are those who belong to the church. And if they don't belong to the church, they should not be baptised until they come to faith. They come to profess their faith in Christ. So, those who come to profess faith in Christ are those who should be baptised. When people come to trust in Jesus, they should be baptised if they haven't been baptised before. But, not only those who trust in faith in Christ are baptised, it's a, it's a sign indeed of what has happened to them, of the covenant by which they're saved. But it says there, infants as such as are members of the visible church are to be baptised. So, it's those who come to profess faith, believers, and their children. Now, some would disagree with the children being baptised. Someone says, how can a child be baptised? How can a, a child be given a, a sign of, of salvation, a sign of cleansing, a sign of rebirth? A child can't have faith. A baby can't have faith. Well, we say to people who say that, let's be careful here. In the Old Testament, there was a sign of circumcision. Circumcision was a sign of the covenant of God, God's promises to bless people, to save people. It was a sign of the cutting away of sin. It was a sign of our hearts being circumcised, of our hearts being changed by the grace of God. And who were to be circumcised? Those who were part of the visible church, those who profess faith in the Lord and their children, their sons particularly in the Old Testament. So this idea to say, listen, don't give a child baptism because a child can't have faith. That's nonsense. Now that doesn't in itself prove baptism, but it's not to say because a child doesn't have faith, it shouldn't be baptised. Let's understand a wee bit here about salvation. Because when people are saying things like that, I think they're failing to understand about salvation. Do we make salvation happen to us? Do we cause salvation to take place? No. Those of us who are Christians, the Bible says we were dead in our sins, we were blind, and people who are spiritually dead, people who are spiritually blind, they do not have the power to come to Christ themselves, they do not have the power to see the truth of the gospel in themselves. So what happens to the salvation? Well, as Ezekiel says, God takes away our heart of stone and gives us a heart of of flesh, a heart that's tender. By the power of God, we're born again. By the grace of God, the Holy Spirit comes and begins that work of changing us. And as, as the Holy Spirit works in us to change us, we're then brought to faith and repentance. As Archbishop William Temple said, the only thing I've contributed to my salvation is the sin that made it necessary. Yes, I came to trust in Christ. Yes, I repented of my sin. But as we saw in previous catechisms, those are grace. It's God's grace. It's, they're gifts from God. It is God who's produced those in us. And so 
when it came to salvation. It was God that worked in us. We were as hopeless, we were as helpless as a little baby is. And God worked in us. And that's why I think when we baptise babies, it's lovely, the children of believers. I think it's lovely because it's, it shows that God comes to the helpless. God comes to such as that. And the reason why we baptise babies is because we believe that the children of believers are special in God's sight. 1 Corinthians 7 says they're sanctified, they're set apart in the eyes of God. The day of Pentecost, Peter, when he was speaking about salvation and baptizing, he says, this promise is for you and for your children. What indeed was uh, said to the Philippian jailer, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved, you and your household. God treats Christians' households differently. And that's why we get our children baptized. Not believing there's magic in it. But we do it because God has told us indeed to apply the sign of the covenant. The sign of salvation. And we're saying to God, bring my child in your time. Bring him to Christ. To faith. And the salvation. May God give such grace. Amen.